It's week 13, 2022. Uh, today is Monday, 28 March. So we started to uh, harvest. Uh, we are harvesting uh, five hectares. I really don't want to harvest uh, the seven hectares. It just gets too stressful. Um, what I've learned is uh, if, you, if you don't have a plan and you just harvest just for the sake of harvest, uh, there, there are far too many uh, rice to move from the, from the field all the way to the road. And then you have to wait, wait for the trucks. Um, there's a lot of factors that you have to consider and so you have to, I, I wanted to lessen my, uh, my stress. Uh, so my, my uh, plan then is to harvest five today and then five tomorrow and five uh, uh, the following day. That sort of thing. That's the plan. Actually, it's uh, in total uh, we're going to harvest like over over 20 hectares. So, just, that's just an example of uh, my miti mitigation plan: reduce the risk and the stress. It it just it it just makes my my stomach. Um, role and uh, I really don't want this uh, thing to, to in impact my health so <laughs> those are the things about being a farmer factor all of that enjoy it uh, one must enjoy the, the harvest uh, and in such a matter that uh, you don't add the stress uh, factor into it so so today I'm going to enjoy it because um, uh, I, I, I wanted the, the less stress, so. So they are, we are harvesting the uh, long pin. Uh, it's uh, four hectares. And they started early in the morning, uh, eight o'clock. And they're almost, they're almost done with the, the four hectares. I mean, uh, with two harvester, uh, it doesn't take long. That's why uh, having a reaper or a harvester is really, if you have lots of land, really is a, an investment, a good one at that. It's it's another factor that I am considering in the next several years. Of so the, the, their rate is basically 8% or uh, translate that into kabans 8 kabans per 100 uh, kabans so if you have 100 they take 8 of that so 8% so uh, really quick now where are just wondering where the uh, karyad, karyadas are, huh? So they've started to uh, bring the uh, sacta brace to the road. It's so hot today. Uh, not so humid, but it's hot nonetheless. So the the water buffaloes are uh, have to cope with the heat, and because of their uh, dark skin, uh, <laughs> it will be uh, it will be uh, several times that they have to immerse themselves in water uh, just to cope. So we've decided to uh, harvest the, the seven hectares. The price is 16. So there, there is an organization that controls the price uh, here. 
and uh, th that organization is breaking the law. They should not be controlling price. Uh, there's a law passed uh, several years ago, and so these organization buyers, uh, price mills, uh, they, they control uh, the prices. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, th this kind of price manipulation does not help the farmers. Th these organizations, they help themselves. They don't help the farmers. Like 16 peso per kilo. And the, the, the cost of diesel, the cost of uh, fertilizers have skyrocketed because of this war. Like, Mr. Putin, come on. Um, you should have known better. So, uh, I blame him for, for this uh, type of uh, uh, prices. Uh, he didn't have to do it. There's nothing to be gained in Ukraine, Mr. Putin. Nothing. So, this is Long Ping 2096. They started to harvest at uh, 8 o'clock. And they basically harvested about uh, four hectares. So I've made up my mind about uh, in the next several years. Uh, basically, my plan is to not sell the rice here in Isabella. Uh, the amount of uh, price manipulation here is, is just way too much for. Uh, for my liking, uh, if you have these rice mills and uh, groups, association that seems to want to that that are controlling the price here, it's actually against the law for for them to do that. Um, and uh, because they have established themselves here now, it's really difficult to overcome their their uh, entrenchment. So they are entrenched, they are part of price manipulation. Um, it's really difficult to fight an entrenched uh, association. So what I have decided is to bypass the, uh, the buyers here, this association. It, 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 it'll take a, a, a bit of planning um, to uh, come up with a plan to bypass this entrenched uh, organization. Um, but deep, deep down, I will bypass them. Uh, I will not sell them uh, this rice to this organization. I will basically uh, transport this rice uh, outside of the province. Um, I have been seeing the, the price manipulation since I started to see uh, uh, the price fixing, um, I saw that. I saw it in 2019. I thought, why? Why are the price not so stable? Uh, why do they fluctuate by the minute, by the hour, by the day? Um, I mean, they're not like stocks that goes up and down in seconds. These are rice, these are commodities. And there should be some sort of a st uh, stable uh, pricing for these that are benefit to the farmers, not to these association rice mills. Uh, they're, they're the ones that really uh, are making um, tons of uh, uh, benefit. Uh, they are not sharing the benefit to the, the hardworking people. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to change that. It'll take a, it'll take a while, but I will change it. Um, I've made up my mind. So, we're done harvesting the long thing. And uh, we're harvesting the uh, SL8. So, these are the uh, long thing. I don't know what the, the, the sack count yet. Uh, we're just... Uh, looking toward uh, bringing in the uh, the SLA the, the SLA has a different sack color it's white 
these these sacks are really bad. So. Oh, I don't want to build it. You know, you know, you build it. That's it. Oh, you must do it. That's it. And this, this is the Tokyo Tower. I wanted to uh, differentiate the uh, SL8 versus long pin. So, most of the long pin are harvested. Uh, there are still leftover long pin that needs to be transported like this one. Uh, but the white sacks uh, are SL8. So, uh, the timetable to complete the uh, harvesting is uh, 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. So we should be done at 1500 So, we're really happy with the, the rice, uh, uh, the, the guys really did a good job with uh, babysitting the, uh, the rice field and the paddy rice. So, uh, the price per kilo is still uh, 16. So it's, it's something that I have to uh, manage, really um, it shouldn't, it should be higher than 60, but because of how this, the, the system that are in place, um, it's really difficult to go to go any higher than 16 if somebody somewhere decides that uh, the price per kilo is is x amount of peso per kilo so my plan or a plan is to uh, have something in place basically uh, these rice, you can't sell, sell them local. You have to move them uh, from here to from point A to point B. Where point B, it, price per kilo is much higher than point A. So uh, this takes uh, logistics. Uh, moving a, a product from point A to point B requires logistics and planning. So. I have to look into what are the logistics, uh, the challenges uh, that goes with this uh, to get the, the, uh, the price that I'm looking for. Uh, with all of this hard work and the people that are managing these uh, the rice, they, the farmers need to be rewarded. Not like this. We're at the whim of someone or a group is deciding the price. So, have to, go to look at plan Z or plan Z. Get better pricing by uh, bypassing the, the entrenched system. So, they uh, pretty much completed the harvest. Uh, I don't know how many uh, actually harvested. So, so this is five hectares.
So there's some over here as well. So I don't know, I don't have the, the data yet, how many uh, kabans of uh, rice we have harvested. Uh, however, uh, it seems like maybe perhaps we're close to 700 uh, kabans. Now the, the, the challenge for us is there's a uh, LPA uh, coming in, so it likes to finish the, the harvest. So, I have multiple buyer. Um, I've learned that you can't just rely on a single buyer to do uh, multiple buyers. So, we're just running through uh, some things. Hey, I love on summertime. So this is the uh, cemetery, or cemetery, it's actually behind the high school, and it's about, uh, it, it's actually 7,000 square meters, so uh, this really, this part really needs to be harvested, the, uh, the panicles are, uh, are, are falling off. Well, to get to the uh, rice fields, I have to go through and destroy these, unfortunately. Uh, I'll have to come up with another plan to get there. Uh, this part of the land, it's uh, March 30, week 13. Uh, according to schedule, uh, this is the week to harvest. So, uh, this is one, two hectares, uh, and uh, we're, we're kind of rushing to complete the, the harvest, so uh, overall we, we probably harvested around 18 hectares, uh, two more to be harvested, so. We're basically the last one to, to be harvested around this uh, place, except for this one. But the majority of the, the rice field have been harvested. Uh, people wa were wondering why uh, we were late, and uh, it's the way the, uh, the calculation came to be. Um, it's really, it really was timely, and, and how uh, uh, we came into this uh, time to harvest. It wasn't deliberate, more, you know, calculated. Uh, nothing to deliberate about. Basically, we say, well, we, we transplant middle December. Uh, my calculation says, well, we should be harvesting middle March to middle April. But this was the, uh, the target week, so, because uh, Depending on the weather, if it's hot, you will harvest early. If it's cooler, uh, either fall into the uh, calculated week to harvest or a little bit one more week. But it seems like based from my uh, two years of uh, rice planting, it seems to be uh, target week minus uh, one to two weeks. So it's, you always ended up uh, two weeks early to harvest, one week, or exactly to the week. So uh, this is, of course, uh, 110 days uh, right. So it, it, you I found that working by days doesn't really make sense because a day fall into a week. So it, it makes logical sense to say, okay, never mind days deal with weeks so I, that's why I did it the lie of the land here on this part uh, is a bit weird so I basically have two triangles uh, so and here's the other triangle so that's why they're doing a manual uh, reaping here 
just because the way the land is the uh, and also it's muddy so so the uh, harvester was stuck here and they had they decided to uh, just do it manually it's uh, cheaper that way by doing it manually the machine is not stuck off into the distance uh, someone is building a resort so that's uh, that's the resort that's being built that's uh, Munoz over there here's an example of what my mom was saying that if you can see the uh, ground in between the uh, paddy rice then expect low yield and so if you uh, if you cannot see the ground then you have a good yield so that kind of observation took many many years um, of doing it over and over after a while you get to see oh yeah I see the ground my yield will be not so not so expected so it's an indicator of what your expectation is going to be with respect to yield so that's a, an important lesson so when I, I you when I look at the paddy field paddy rise I say well do I see the the ground uh, Yes, but it'll take years for me to finally come to uh, you know a decision to say yeah this is good or this is bad, uh, bad. So min many more years looking at things and from that decide good or bad. So here's an example of what uh, potentially a good yield. You don't see the ground in between the uh, particles. Of course, uh, I'll find out soon enough uh, what the yield is going to be here. I, I probably expect like uh, 150 uh, sacks per hectare here, but it depends how they uh, uh, do do it. Meaning that the sacks they were requested to fill the sacks as, as much as they can so that. Uh, the density of the of the sack will be high, and the weight for the mass is around 59 kilos per sack. That sort of thing. So we'll see how that comes about. So he's uh, only one reaper is assigned to the two hectares. Uh, here they're chasing a duck. <laughs> so, anyway, that, that's, that's it. <laughs> okay, they are at the Mormon uh, area, so this is one hectare. Not sure, they're almost done. So, I'm just gonna go look at the other place. So this is the Basau area. So this is one one hectare. We want to finish all of these today.